Hi everyone, it's Julia. I am back with another project from the same um, pattern that I had in my from my previous video. This is a little pattern that I'm selling in my Etsy store. I'll link it down below for you, but there was a bonus sheet in it that I wanted to do today, these cute little gnomes. Last week's project was a quilt that we did out of the same, um, pa the same pattern, and I'll link that video down below for you as well. I'm doing a pillow, it's 13 by 13 inches square, and I've got, I'm gonna be putting a border on the top and the bottom of this. This cream fabric is a quilted muslin. Um, um, I just had a little bit of it left from a previous project, and I thought it's just gonna work great for this pillow. I also have a backing cut there at 13 by 13. I'm using a salvi, and this is what I'm gonna use to put my little gnomes on. I'm gonna be doing some free motion stitching just outlining those gnomes. Have the pen that I'm going to be using for this. We'll be using a golden fabric medium and my intense blocks to add the color to my gnomes. Just really felt like coloring this week and so that is what I'm going to be doing. Very first thing I'm doing is adding my borders to my top here. Just take cut and just going to be drawing with a two and a half inches in on both sides. This is just a water soluble pen, but the pen doesn't show at all, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just lining the, that little strip up just so you, I can see that and get it on straight. Doing a quarter inch seam and then pressing my my um, border towards my fabric. I'm just grabbing that sheet that I need out of here. And then taking a piece of this salvi and just cutting enough to cover this, this design. This is a water-soluble stabilizer, so it will completely dissolve in water. This is an easy way to get a design on to a piece of fabric that you can't see through. Like this quilted fabric is too thick for me to, to be able to put the design underneath and trace it. And so instead I'm tracing it right onto this Solvi. And I'm using my Uniball pen for this. I have found that ballpoint pens, just regular ballpoint pens do, do not work very well with this um, Solvi. I think a felt pen might work as well. You might want to do some exper experimenting, but I'll link my, this pen down below for you. It doesn't smudge and I, I really like using it. It's waterproof too. I do use it on just making marks on fabric. I just had some washi tape there or masking tape just to hold that into place. And now I'm gonna put it where I want it on this piece of fabric. I'm gonna add some pins as well just to keep that into place while I'm sewing. I'm at my sewing machine now and I have my free motion foot on. I have black bobbin thread on and then I'm just a regular all-purpose black thread on the top. Just lowering my, fit, my pressure foot. I do have my feed dogs dropped and I'm going to be doing the movement on this and I'm just going to be outlining as close as I can. I can um, just write on this line. Um, it's really easy to see it with this Solvi. Just did a little back and forth stitch there to, to get my needle or my thread secured and then I'm gonna snip that off. Just, I'm not taking my bobbin threads to the top on this project. We did in our last um, quilt project because I didn't want to a mess, a bobbin mess on the back side. But for a pillow top, it doesn't matter. That's not going to show. Going back and forth a few times just to add some texture to this tree. Um, and this is regular time here. I will be speeding it up in, in a little bit, but I wanted you to see just how, how fast I'm going. Using free motion zigzag would have been really cute on this tree too. I kind of forgot about it while I was um, doing this. But just back and forth motion here is giving it a, a good, um, a, just a good look, a good texture look. And then on to my other little guy here. I'm speed, and this is sped up, um, I believe 
two times now. So it's going to be going a lot quicker. And I just wanted to say that I still continue to go over my design more than once. You can see there. And don't worry if it gets off. This is just a fun way to practice free motion and really opens up a lot of doors um, if, when, you, when you can somewhat get this mastered. Everything is stitched and I'm removing my tape and my pins. And I've got a lot of this um, solvy now and I wanna get rid of as much of that extra as I can. So I'm just taking my scissor and um, just, just cutting it off. It cuts very easily. Just getting the big hunks away. And now just taking my fingers and gently tearing the rest of it away from this outline. And notice I just did the outline of my little gnomes. Um, I'm not, I didn't add any detail or texture to the different beards and whatever, and I'll do that next. Um, it's easier to get rid of that, that salvi when there isn't so many stitches. So I just did the outline stitching. I'm spraying my little design now just to get it damp, not, not really wet, but damp, just to get rid of the rest of that little residue that's maybe left over. This is just a paper towel and I'm just ironing this now. And a lot of that residue will come off on this paper towel. Anything left in those little little nooks and crannies. And you can see it there. Um, and I can feel off my hands. There's still a couple little spots and I just spritz with water a, a little more there. And again, this is water soluble, so it's just gonna dissolve. Just a really slick way. Now back to my sewing machine. I don't show this, but I'm gonna be adding those details in. And there they are, they're all sewn in and I'm adding some um, fabric medium to my little palette there. And then just taking my brush and just scrubbing on these just to, up, to lift some of that color and then adding some more of that fabric medium just to get it liquid. And then just doing some coloring. I'm using a, a, a brush that has stiffer bristles. This is like a scrubber brush. Again, I'll link stuff down below for you if you if you can want some something similar to what I'm doing. Just have a water to wash my brush out before colors. And now just going on to my green. Now I'm not a fancy painter at all, but I even growing up, I just loved when I was little to color. I would just get me a box of crayons and a coloring book, and I'd be I'd be set for hours. And I still just love doing it. And as I grew up, I felt like I wasn't good at painting and I, and I quit for years. Um, but you know, that inner critic, that critic that we all have, but you know what, I, I, I'm back to it now because I really just, I just love it. So I'm not painting here, I'm coloring <laughs> and I'm having fun. So I'm not concerned with shadows and, or, making the shading that's you know correct or not correct I'm just getting some color on these cute little gnomes and here's what it looks like notice I have some I added some dimensional paint to for fur on this one gnome and I'm just use my Arteza um, and it's just 3d, 3D fabric um, dimensional paint. I believe it was like a sparkly white that I used. And then I also added some metallic gold to the tree, which kind of just gave it a shimmer, which was kind of fun. And now I've dug in through my, my box of stuff and I came up with some embellishments. This was a brad that I thought would be cute. Pom-poms would be wonderful, but I could not find my pom-poms. Still couldn't find those. Found some heart buttons though. So I'm gonna be adding some buttons and um, that star is just some kind of a charm thing. It's not even a button. I'm just poking a hole at the top of this little gnome and I'm gonna be inserting this brad and then just opening up the back side. And now I'm gonna be heading back to my sewing machine and I'm using 
on my my button sewing foot or whatever function um, to sew these buttons on. I'm just going to be changing my foot here in a second. I have red thread on. I just thought that would add. Um, and this is my button sewing on foot. I do have a button um, function or feature on this machine. But if you don't have that, just a zigzag would work with a um, stitch length set to zero. Just getting that into place and lowering it. That's kind of the trickiest part is just to get it underneath where you don't break a needle. You want to make sure that it's the right width. I just walk my machine for until I make sure that my width is right. And then I just go for it. And then it automatically will tie the thread. I'll just snip that off and then add the next one. And then because I, I'm lazy and didn't want to actually take a, a needle and thread out, I decided just to use this same method to get this star on. Even though it's not a button, that thread is just going to go over the edge of this star. And there we have it. They're starting to take shape and have character and personalities. Now to finish my pillow, it's just simple. I'm just gonna add the back here. I always mark my opening, just so I don't forget at the sewing machine. And then I'm just gonna add a couple pins and then just take it. I'm gonna be sewing, I believe I saw a half inch seam allowance making sure to just to um, secure that that um, beginning and ending there clipping my corners turning it so the right sides are out poking out those corners I have my pokey stick there and just getting those corners out And then we'll be ironing this. And I do like to iron the design somewhat too, and that will set that paint a little bit more, or that, that ink, it's, I guess it's not paint, ink. Closing up the bottom. And then I don't show this. Um, I will link, I have another video, just a short video on how I finish my pillows. And I sew, sew them with on the sewing machine. And here, here's some pictures. I love it with my little quilt, just little display here. Thank you, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful week. We are definitely going to have a snowy Christmas here. It's a white Christmas in Minnesota. Um, thank you for joining me. Bye for now.